Hey guys! Welcome to a new Let's Play for something I've never done before. I I've never done- I I've done this game before. <laughs> I want to say I did this back in the old time. The peaceful world of Dreamland is in great danger. In Dreamland, dreams always flowed from the wonderful Fountain of Dreams. The Fountain of Dreams collected the hopes and dreams of all living things. It was also responsible for the sweet dreams and rest that come to, from deep sleep. But one day, everyone in Dreamland lost the ability to dream. King DDD was bathing in the Fountain of Dreams. He had even taken the Star Rod, the source of the Fountain's power, and broken it into pieces that he gave to his underlings. Now Kirby must embark on an adventure. To restore peaceful nap times to all the residents of Dreamland. That was the story of the game, guys. That's actually, that's actually one of the best stories the Kirby games have had in a while. No, no, you're talking real talk here for a second? I'm just gonna erase this random file. Okay, I'm gonna make a point here. I, I don't care what anyone has to say for one, I love this game. I don't care if it's this big remake of an old NES game, which I can't seem to find. I have it. I own it. I just can't find it anywhere. I was gonna do that one, but I couldn't find it, so I just did this one. Anyways, I love this game. This is like one of my favorite Game Boy Advance games. This is my second Kirby game I ever played, and you know Kirby was a major part of my childhood. And this, is, this game just means a lot to me. This is generally my childhood in a nutshell. Whenever I went anywhere on a car trip, this was the game I freaking played. I don't know about... The, you, you guys know you had that one handheld game you played everywhere you went. And this was mine. No, don't erase the file again. So when was our new file? In Vegetable Valley, level 1. And this is demonstrating you can get powers from your enemies if you, uh, suck them up. If you guys never played a Kirby game before. Um, I understand that in the NES one, because that was the, second, the first time Kirby ever had copy ability in the second Kirby game to ever come out, but... And I guess it's probably, like, one of the first popular ones, because I know Kirby's Dream Land wasn't, like, the most popular game back when it came out. I also want to do that game sometime, but I want to do it as a holiday special, because the game's short. Oh, what's this? I forgot about this room. Secret room! You get UFO power, which is the best power in the game if you guys didn't know. Uh, UFO power is the best power in the game. You can't carry it out of a level because it's so good. That was super fragilistic. SB sucked that. Sucked that. That sucked, I meant. Sucked that. that that's what you say, guys. S Super fragilistic SP elf. I don't even know. I, I'm being very random today. Um, I'm very excited to do this LP. I've had this one planned for a long time. Actually, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I've had this one planned from the start. I've wanted to do this game since I started this channel. I actually tried to at once. If you guys remember that? But the quality was really bad. I didn't know what I was doing with my dazzle. I haven't used it in like three years at the time. Three years, two a year, two years even. But this time I'm better off, and my commentary's a little better. I got a little more. I got the hang of this commentary thing. Over three years, took me three years to get the hang of it, but I'm good at commentary now. <laughs> but um, no, this 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 freaking game. This is also a mini game here. You just press A to hit the bomb, and you'll hit it to the next player. Player is. I don't think it's random. I think it's chosen ahead of time for each level. But it you can't control which direction it goes. I know that much. Anyways, um, what was I saying? Yes, uh, but yeah, this game, I had it planned from the start. This is like one of my favorite games on the Game Boy Advance, like I've said. That, right, 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 after, I actually know Pac-Man Arrangement is my second favorite. Pac-Man Collection is my second, my second favorite Game Boy Advance game. This is my favorite. Fuck. Anyways, um, what was I saying? I, I forgot what I was saying. But no, this game, I had this plan from the start. I was actually going to do this after Kirby 64, and I decided doing two Kirby games in a row would just be crazy. I did Kirby's Epic Yarn anyways, so I, I, I really just avoided that whole fact there. I did Kirby's Epic Yarn. After Kirby's Epic Yarn, I decided, I, I thought, you know, this, this would be the dumbest thing to play three Kirby games in a row. I'd be obsessed if I did that, and I don't want to seem like an obsessed fanboy or something. And then uh, Banjo-Kazooie went by, and I thought, not yet. So I put in Sly Cooper, finished that one, and I was like, you know what? It's time for this game. 
Now, I'm not going to spoil, spoil what my next LP is going to be, but I already have it, like, half recorded. So I'm not going to mention this game through it. So, uh, I'm sorry if you guys think like that. In fact, I'm going to mention it as being the LP immediately after Sly Cooper, because that's what it was originally planned to be. This LP is like a last-minute surprise LP for myself, even, because, uh, you know, I, I love this game. I thought I, I wanted to get some more time to work with Mar to, with, with uh, that other LP. I just uh, said one word, almost. I'll cut that out. Um, anyways. Yeah, I wanted some more time to work with that one LP. Just to fix, fix things up. Make it good. And, uh, yeah. So I do this game while I wait. I love this game. I really do. This is a great game. I, I, I really do suggest it to anyone who likes side-scrollers. It's an easy yet fun one. And that's, that's... That was close. And it's another level complete. If it turns yellow, it means you got the level complete. If it stays red, but the flag is there, it means you missed something in the level. As of now, I won't miss anything, if there's nothing to miss. It's not until the third world where they introduce the items of this game, which I will not spoil, of course. That's another thing of this game. This game, this doesn't, game doesn't introduce anything important that you could possibly miss until a later point in the game where you'd be ready for that kind of thing. And they introduced the first one real easy. This game is, this game is, in other words, this game is very good at introducing things, if you guys haven't assumed by now. Oh, saved it. Also, sword power. Why, I love how he has a little Link hat. I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna kind of spoil another power. Actually, I'm gonna spoil it when the chance comes. Because I'll probably get it by that time. But as of now, I have a Link hat. And that's cool. I think it might be a Smash Brothers reference, because they didn't have hats in the original Kirby's Adventure for NES. So I think it might be a Smash Brothers reference. I don't know if uh, Melee existed at this time. But I know, uh, obviously, Smash Brothers 1 exi existed at this time when this remake was made. But as for, uh... Oh, that was great. Actually, wait. He had the Link hat back in Kirby's Superstar. What am I saying? The Link it was just a Link joke, I guess. A Zelda joke. What's this room? This is the uh, museum. Which means you can have a free power. If you need another sword, there it is. That's all it's good for. A few extra points, maybe. If you for, I don't know if anyone plays games for scores anymore. Just make a point with that. Okay, that was Mr. Frosty. Mr. Frosty. A funny story about Mr. Frosty. He can see his power freeze. He's like an ice climber character. That's pretty cool, too. Another one of those little Smash Brothers references they added. And this one was truly a Smash Brothers reference. They had a different thing for all the other games before this. Because ice climbers, you know, wasn't a big thing until Smash Brothers... Back on the NES, like, I don't think anybody's played it. I've never personally played it before. And I'm about to get, like, a bunch of hate comments right now. Anyways, uh, going back to Kirby, what I should be talking about. Um, damn it, for one. But anyways, going on. Um. What's this saying? Shit. Uh. Yeah, Mr. Frosty. Fun fact about Mr. Frosty. My, I think this is the funniest thing. Because they messed it up. Um, Mr. Frosty... In uh, Kirby's Ad Amaz Kirby the Amazing Near is repeatedly note, note the word repeatedly referred to as Mr. Flosty. Now, one thing is though, in in Kirby and the Amazing Mirror, he's in a different world, different universe called Mirrorland, and everything has a different name. It's kind of like Zelda, where Termina has different names and everything in Hyrule. Now, that still doesn't fix the fact they just it's, it's probably a name mess up rather than an alternate mirror counterpart i just got killed by miss by mr frosty by wispy woods that's the name i got this guys fight him with no powers this is how it's done any other power this is the easiest boss fight in existence face the yeah, face a tree has a face on it I like how the apples die when you kill him why can't all games just 
can do that. I mean, it's not hard to kill all the enemies that are around in a boss fight after you kill the boss. Level 2! Ice cream, ice cream, ice cream, ice cream island, whatever. I'm gonna try to get this whole game done in as many episodes as I possibly can. So I'm gonna rush this game a little bit. Not rush it to the point where it's like you guys can't tell what's going on. Because that's what's the point of an LP if that's the case, you know? But I'm gonna get to the point where uh, I won't do anything pointless, like any of those pointless rooms. I won't. I'll try not to redo levels. But I'm probably going to, anyways. So I'm not gonna make a big deal out of that. But, um. Most importantly, I'm uh, doing 20 minute episodes, like always. So. I might get, for the, for the beginning, I'm going to get two worlds per level, per episode done. Maybe. Later on, it's going to be like one world per episode, maybe even half a world at some point. This is going great. The graphics in this game are awesome, by the way. Just to make a point saying that, Game Boy Advance never had the best of graphics. And I mean, this is pretty average for the Game Boy Advance graphics, but this really did prove what it was capable of. Not very much, but it's pretty damn good for back in its day. I remember back at a time when you played a handheld game, you did not expect anything. You expected nothing from a handheld game, and you were happy with shit like this. In fact, I was incredibly satisfied with crap like this, but... I got screwed over with that one, I'm just saying. I got like two black things at the end. I still got first place. And also how that works is you can't hit the black things, they'll slow you down. And you just hold A all, all, all the other times. It's, it's really easy to do. The mini games this game are very simple but very fun. The old Kirby's Kirby's Adventure. I thought I messed that up. But um Kirby's Adventure, the mini games weren't very good in Kirby's Adventure. If I could play Kirby's Adventure, I would. Just saying. But yeah, Game Boy Advance. I think Game Boy Advance was a major time for Nintendo to do remakes. Because they did, they did Game Boy Advance and Nintendo DS were both really big times for remakes. This was done. Nintendo did, uh, they did, um, Kirby Superstar Ultra, which is obviously a Cooper Superstar remake. They did, uh, Super Mario 64 DS, which is a Super Mario 64 remake, obviously. And they did, uh, what's some other remakes they did? They did Ocarina of Time 3D, which is a 3DS remake of Ocarina of Time. That's just wheel power. I don't know why I just turned it down. I'll also get it in the next room. Um, it's Star Fox 3D, 64 3D, or whatever it was. That, that was a Star Fox 64 remake, I know that. Um, it did Metroid Zero Mission for Game Boy Advance. That was a remake of... I actually, if you guys didn't know, I'm not like... I, I, I like the Metroid series. I mean, I've played a lot of the games. But I'm not like a fan of the Metroid series, so I haven't played all the games like most people have. And... Personally, I've never actually played the NES version of Me the NES Metroid, and I didn't actually know Zero Mission was a remake of the NES one. So I just played through it like it was any other game. This game, I actually played the NES Kirby's Adventure quite a few times before I learned this was a remake of that, too. But, which is surprising because I know this game's world's like the back of my hand. There's like three frames of animation and I don't even care. <laughs> also, these ball things are unpredictable. Just saying. Shit. Uh, okay, now. Yeah. I mean, there, also, I guess you can consider uh, Mario Kart. It's not is it Super Circuit. Is Super Circuit was the Game Boy one. Yeah, Mario Kart Super Circuit. It wasn't a uh, remake of Mario Kart for Super Nintendo, but it had all the Super Nintendo worlds in it, so it's close enough. Why did I grab UFO? I, I, I honestly, I don't think UFO is the best power in the game. I think Sword is. UFO was kind of hard to control. I like being able to fly, though. I 
I like, I have to respect half the things about UFO, but I have to disrespect half the things about it too. The attacks aren't the best, it's just beam and laser combined, which are two of the worst powers of the game in my opinion. But, a lot of people seem to disagree, a lot of people say this is the best power in the game, and I'm not going to argue with them. They can think what they want, I don't care. Oh, no, 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 That is the suicide hole. The freaking suicide hole. Also, that water. That freaking water is just a line. It's just a line, and when you touch that line, it says you're swimming now. Can I just can I make a point about that? Can, can, can I just say that that is, uh, cheesy? Kirby games are also the only games where there's, like, floating blocks of fucking water. Just saying. Like, they use the programming, the easy pro, the simple programming of these old-style game-making that are an opportunity when they make these games. See? Not the best for fighting. It's just the best for navigating. Screw it. I'm gonna use the best power for these things. It's called no power. I love the guy swimming around, <laughs> swinging that thing around. It's funny to me. I don't know why. I don't know why it is. Also, those knights. Um, they have the various names. They have like uh, Axe Knight, Mace Knight, uh, Trident Knight, Spear Knight. Uh, and I don't know if all these are in the game. Uh, because I don't know what any weapons are. I th I th it's not a mace. It's, uh, what's the one he's carrying? Not sh what's that weapon called with the big ball? The, uh... Oh, the... I want to call it the... What do I want to call it the blundering stick? <laughs> That's literally what I want to call it. Um, what's it called? The, uh... Ah, I forgot the name of the freaking weapon. Shit. I should know it's like my favorite weapon of all the medieval ones. It's the freaking uh medieval what is it called? Whatever. Actually he's not a uh axe knight, he's halberd knight or whatever. Like actually it's funny halberd knight, it's like a, it's like a funny character to me. Because I noticed this. Um Okay, uh, the difference between a halberd and an axe is a halberd has a speeder at the spike at the end, and an axe does not. A battle axe does not. A halberd's basically a uh, spear and an axe combined. And basically, halberd knight was an enemy in the games, and uh, I'm just I'm gonna use this power. I'm like, I, I personally do not like the uh, la the uh, voice, the mic power. I'm weird, I know. I don't see it very useful, it just kills all the enemies on screen. Which is good in games where enemies present a challenge, but this game, the enemies pose no challenge to kill. I mean, as long as you hit the enemies, they're not gonna hit you. But, um... Yeah, like, they actually had an enemy called Axe Knight, and they eventually started calling him Halberd Knight. When, uh, I guess, like, fans did something, I don't know what happened, but... They eventually started calling him Halberd Knight. And, uh... I don't know, I just thought that was silly. I think... I, I don't know. What's that, is it Halberd Knight? I know there's a character called Halberd Knight, and when I started seeing Halberd Knight, I didn't see Axe Knight anymore. So I just assumed. I don't know. I'm making a complete fool of myself right now. What is this? Oh, this is the arena. Which boss is this? Oh, Mr. Flo Frosty. Mr. Fluff Frosty. Honestly, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I don't really know much about the behind the history of this game. As to why Nintendo made it. This is the one of the like I know a lot about the history of most Nintendo games as like to what was going on in uh Miyamoto's head when they were made, but this game I don't know. This game, I, I, I really don't know what was going on. Like, it just, one day, one day, they were just like, hey, let's make a remake of Kirby's Dream Land, or Kirby's Dream Land, Kirby's Adventure. Kirby's Dream Land, I guess you can consider Superstar a remake of that, too. Also, Ice Power is like the only power that's in all the Kirby games. 
Not even, uh, fire was properly in all the Kirby games. Unless it was. Fire was burning in this game. So I love it as, like, uh, actually, I couldn't really say that. What am I saying? One thing I don't understand is in Kirby's, uh, 6 Kirby 64, Kirby 64? In Kirby 64, there's... Okay, when they had two ice powers to choose from, it was either ice breath or ice... force field, whatever. And they made a good choice. When it came to fire, they chose the... Like I guess you call burning over, uh... Flame. I don't know what the exact things all the powers are. And so in other words, they chose rather than the one where Kirby gets fire breath. They chose the one where Kirby turns into a little fireball and dashes on by. Who the hell does that, by the way? Who the hell chooses that power? Over the other one? Nintendo's not as smart as we are when it comes to what powers are fun to use and entertaining. Yeah, it's certainly a cooler power in a way, but Oh god! Dead. First, not first, the second death. I don't know how many deaths I've had so far. I'm doing good though. The rainbow background, that is cool. Also, if you swallow that, you'll get ball power. Ball power is like the most useless one, in my opinion. I don't see what the point of it is. Why do I keep getting hit by this freaking paint roller? God damn it. You stop hit me, bro. Bro. See, it doesn't work. It doesn't do anything good. Oh, a useful one. Shit. That worked. Okay, so that's two levels out of the way in one episode. That was a great start. Two bosses, two worlds. We're on level three already. I think it's a point where I can end the episode and say thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.